Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Yarn Flakes podcast. My name is Audrey and this is a Niti Yarny podcast from the southwest of France. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this new episode. I hope you're all doing very well. Um, I hope you are well and safe with your family and yeah, that everything is okay for you. I have a little episode with you, uh, with a few things to share with you for this week, for this week, for this half week, half month, weeks, uh, starting well. I had to turn on the lights um, because it's so gloomy today. I don't know what's up. It's not raining, but it's like cloudy and dark. And so you couldn't see anything. So I had to turn on the artificial light, which is why I look like I'm um, so illuminated. Uh, the colors aren't too messed up though. It's just slightly yellow. And it's just a bit of a harsh light, but at least you can see. So yeah, I have uh, nice things to share. I have a new pattern release. I have a finished object. I have some uh, works in progress and some uh, buttons help. <laughs> Cry for help for your advice on button. Uh, change button choice. Uh, pretty yarn I want to show you. Um, more... Barangelo Christmas ornaments making, um, yeah, a bunch of different things. Um, I will also talk about Patreon at the end of the video uh, because I have a Patreon page where you can support me and find some uh, nice community content. And at the end, I will also recommend uh, a YouTube channel that uh, I really like uh, watching uh, these days, and so. I thought it would be nice to share it because it's a soothing type of video uh, that uh, are posted quite often on this channel. So yeah, that is the plan for this episode. And I'm feeling a little bit messy uh, today. Yeah, like my hair is blue green. Just let ignore that. Uh, yeah, we're in for quite a messy episode, let me tell you. But I'm going to start and you can find timestamps to all the different sections of the podcast in the description down below. So if you want to skip anything, feel free to look at that and jump ahead. If you see that I start to ramble on something, just yeah, <laughs> just skip. <laughs> and I also put links to everything that I talk about as well as my social media, my patterns for sale on uh, my different shops and my Patreon page. Voila. Hi. So... I have a new <laughs> pattern <laughs> that I just put published on Ravelry and Payhip. And it's a design that you have seen me making and that you all seem to like very much. So uh, it is now available and it is this textured cowl and it's called Pilar. Pilar, which is the Spanish name um, and it's my great aunt uh, name. <laughs> and. I just thought it was really very fitting because it like it's a pillar thing and those cables sort of looks like pillar. It's a pun basically. <laughs> Not a highly qualitative one, but it's still a pun. So this is a, a cowl that is knitted in the round. You start with a provisional cast on and you knit in the round until the desired length. So I made mine so that it just sits in one turn nicely around the neck. It's about 65 centimeter, um, but you can obviously knit it however long you want. If you want it to stay a little bit loosely over the shoulders, you can go up until 100 centimeter. And if you want a cow that you can twist twice over your neck, you can make it at least 125. Uh, basically, you just go and go and you can see, try and try and close it, uh, holding it and see how you like. Um, it's a very customizable shape for that. And you knit, you knit, you knit, you knit in the round, those cables until the end and then you make a grafting. So I chose to make mine as a Moebius, which is this twist that you can see here, this infinity twist. Um, but you don't have to, obviously. Um, and yeah, it features a bunch of different cables. So the main cables of the cowl are these ones here, 
which are twisted cables here, twisted stitches with a center pearl, twist like this. You have then more standard cables like these ones, which are just two by two cables. You have cables that are uh, like zigzags, these ones. Basically, these ones, they're made of twisted stitches. Here you have uh, left and right twists. And at some point, one of the stitch just travels to the other side and you can see it forms this zigzag thingy. And then the biggest cable of all is this one, which is sort of a medallion type cable because it forms these oval type shapes. And yeah, it just undulates. Basically the cable portion is just this, where the stitches sort of move. They don't actually cross here in the center, it just sort of goes in and out. And in the center you have this fake eyelet cable thingy, which I really like doing. It's a really simple thing to do and I really like how it looks. Um, yeah. The cables in this are not complicated. I wouldn't recommend it if it's your first time doing cables, but if you've already knit some cables or if you uh, are feeling adventurous, then sure, it's not complicated because, like I said, it's just knitted in the round, so there's no shaping or anything. And also there's small cables, like the, the actual crossing only happen on a few stitches at a time. Obviously, the pattern includes instructions on how to do each cable. And um, yeah, uh, I wanted to insert a video on left and right twist because Every time I, in one of my design, I use left and right twist. I always get the issue because I, um, I do them in a specific way. There are various ways to do them. And I just thought I included a video of how I do them just to sort of show you um, how I like to do them and sort of explain different things <laughs> regarding left and right twist. So I'm going to insert this video right here. A word on left and right twist. There are different ways to do it. Uh, they both kind of have the same result, except there's one way that I found is a little bit more elastic, um, but it's mainly going to depend on your personal tension, on the yarn that you are using. So you can just fiddle and see which way gives you the best result. The way I do them, I like the result it gives. As you can see, you can see that I have twisted stitches, um, left stitch and right twist, and they look pretty decent, even though the yarn I'm using is totally not appropriate for this. But yeah, so first I'm going to show you the right leaning twist. Um, so basically a, right, a twist is sort of like a cable, so you want to move two stitches. So you could pretty much do it like a cable. Um, if I'm going to do a right twist here, it means I want this stitch here, this one, to go over the next one. So I can just do it like a cable, and I do my cable without cable needles, like so. I just move the stitches, and now I have them twisted in the right position. Now you can knit them through the back loop, or you can knit them normally, but my experience is that if a pattern tells you right twist, they want you to knit them through the back loop so that you have twisted stitches, as you can see. Because if not, they would just tell you to do a, a cable two right or one by one cable. They wouldn't use the word right twist uh, unless you'd specifically have to twist them. Now, the way I do those right twist is a little bit different. I first knit them two together and this basically means that the stitch that was uh, the most on the left is going to lay over the other one and it's going to be at an angle to the right which is sort of like what happens when you're making a decrease. It's the same principle. So after I've done that, I'm going to knit again the first stitch. And this basically brings me the other stitch back to the, to the left side this time. And you can see I have here stitches that have been crossed. And 
And now for the left twist, gonna do essentially the same thing. Again, you could do it as a cable. So I'm just gonna move my stitches so that the one that was on the right now is to the left. As you can see, it's crossed. But the way I do it is, so you have to knit the second stitch through the back loop and you have to do it like this. So when you knit something through the back loop, of course you have to take, well, the back loop that's in the back. Now the question is not there when you're knitting the first stitch because whether you go like this or you go really behind the work and like this, it's the same result, right? But when a pattern tells you to knit a stitch through the back loop and it's not the first stitch, it's one of the follow-up, don't go like this. Um, unless the pattern specifically tells you to because this is really unnatural and also it ob obstructs your needle. Like your needle is not free here. You have that stitch that's bothering you. So you, you have to go it this way unless the pattern tells you otherwise. But that's like the default thing that if you have to knit a stitch that's not the first one and you have to do something weird with your needle like going from the front to the back, the pattern will tell you. But knit through the back loop, it means go through the loop that's in the back, so from the back. So I'm knitting the second stitch through the back loop. And then I'm knitting the two together. And basically what, what we're doing when we're doing this is the opposite of what was done before, is that you ha we first have got that stitch that we now have to the right, and then we knitted the two together so that we have the left leaning thing now on that side. So that's how I do the right and left twist. So yeah, this is how I like to do my right and left twist. And yeah, I hope that was a little bit useful. Um, and they're actually the, the stitches that are made uh, here, basically. Just here. Um, but yeah, um, it's a really simple accessory. I wanted something rich and textured for the autumn. And yeah, so because of the twist of the Moebius, uh, you have like a fake seam at the back where the cables don't join. Uh, this is because you twist them because the cables are different on one side of the tube and on the other. And I did that for several reasons <laughs> because I, I wanted the twist so that you actually see both sides of the cowl. Um, all in one go, basically. Um, and I like having a fake seam because when you are grafting, you can, and you're doing the twist, you can make sure that when you have the fake seam at the back and when you're at the front, you can see here, you can see all the different cables right on the front. And this way, I always know how to wear it because if there wasn't a seam, I I could just move the the twist around and not have the same arrangement of cables. So this is why I actually like having the seam at the back. But if you want the cables to match, just don't do the <laughs> the Moebius then. If you if that's not the look that you want. Uh, so yeah, it's highly customizable basically. And uh, yeah, maybe I should put it on for a bit. It's a bit difficult with the hair and the earrings. But yeah, basically this is how it lays. And this is the way I like to wear my cows because they're not too tight, <laughs> but they're not too loose. So it just sits well, um, keeping me warm. And you can see how it looks. That this is a great association of color altogether, like the green and the caramel and the the orange is just brilliant. I look really good right now, <laughs> but yeah, um, this is how Pilar looks when it's worn. Uh, but like I said, it's really easy to just make it any shape of cow you want. Um, and um, yeah, 
As far as yarn goes, this is a fingering weight cowl. I used Filcolana Arweta, which is a Danish brand, and it's a merino nylon blend, an 80-20. It's a typical sock weight, um, soft merino yarn. If you, um, I understand it's more readily available in Europe. Um, if you um, are looking for a commercial yarn that will do pretty much anything, um, and it's a very good substitute for hand dyed, those hand dyed sock or merino yarns. Well, I really recommend that you check out Arweta by Phil Colana because it has a stunning range of colors. It's really soft. Uh, it has a great definition, as you can see. Um, to make color work, it will pretty much work like any superwash merino would. Uh, so if that's a thing that you like, then you can go for it. Um, they also have a mohair range that is really matching in colors, so that's if you want to double it, that's great. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a commercial brand. I think each 50 gram uh, skein is about, or roll is about four to five euros. Uh, I think it's five, I don't remember exactly, but um, I really like it and I really recommend. I think it's my favorite fingering sock weight type um, merino yarn that is commercial. Um, I really, really like it. And um, yeah, it made a really nice, soft, crisp, cabled cow. And I really hope you like it. I know a lot of you were waiting for it. Um, and yeah, my testers and I managed to to make it happen quite quickly, I must say. You see here, I messed up my twist. Where's my twist? It's here. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is Pilar and it's now available on Ravelry and Payhip. And as usual on Ravelry for the release, there is a little discount code. It's 15% off until uh, Sunday. <laughs> Sunday with the code Pilar. Every detail is in the description. And um, it also makes a nice, easy gift um, in case you're starting to look for that. And um, yeah, that is it for the promotion <laughs> segment of the podcast. And I can now move on to my finished object, which is the sweater I'm wearing. Yes, I finally finished my Calm sweater, which is a design by Fiona Alice, which was published by Brooklyn Tweed. So... I started knitting this sweater back in March. So yeah, I, th I feel like uh, that's what I was saying the last time I showed it to you, that every year I must have this one project that just takes a lot of time because I let it go to the side a little bit and focus on other things and then I take it back and then I let it again. And yeah, it just takes a long time. Of course, this is a highly textured sweater, so doesn't help but I'm very happy it's finished so this is a sweater that is knitted from the bottom up and here we go <laughs> so you start with the hem which is a split hem at the back and it has this twisted rib thing with eyelets and then you join in the round and you basically work in mustache with a twisted a broken twisted rib basically so this is a twisted ribbing except in in those lines here you alternate knit and purl knit and purl so this is why it looks like this and while you're doing this you increase here on the side until you reach a full the full bust measurement you separate front and back you knit them separately you use a three needle bind off here you pick up stitches for the sleeve you make the eyelet thing again and then the sleeves are entirely worked in mustache until the cuffs. The sleeves are not too loose, they're, they're comfortable here and then they slightly taper until the cuff. It's not a balloony effect. And the cuffs are worked like the hem with the eyelet thingy and the twisted rib. And then you pick up stitches for the collar and it's double collar which means that you work it double the height and then you fold it over and you basically attach the live stitches to the inside here. And this is a way of doing the 
double color, which I don't like because I have a really hard time. I have a really hard time um, identifying the right stitch. And as you can see, it's not perfectly done. I actually did it all the way up to here, I think, and then noticed it was really uh, funky and I had to undo everything and restart. Basically, when you're doing this, you have to attach the live stitches to the corresponding stitch that you picked up so that it lays straight, right? And I just find it difficult for me. Um, I, I really like double colors, but I like making them top down because I find it easier. It's easier for me to see on the cast on edge than to see here on the picked up line where um, there were knits and pearls that sort of looks a bit messy and yeah, but I still made it and I still look really like how it looks. I didn't notice in the design that it was a folded neckline, but um, I'm happy it is because it's brilliant and it looks really neat and it really finishes the whole sweater. And um, even if it's not perfect, I think knitting doesn't have to be perfect. I'm quite a um, relaxed person regarding this. I wish everyone would just chill a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes during my test knits or uh, when people are knitting my designs, sometimes I receive questions or I see people posting pictures of their knitting and they're saying, oh, uh, it's bad, it's so full of mistake, it's not perfect. And it's like, the thing is often they don't say which which is the mistake. It happened a lot with this cow. <laughs> like some of my testers were posting pictures saying, oh, I did a mistake on the cable at the beginning. Uh, it's it's bad and I was wondering if you were all trying to play a guess game with me because I was looking at the pictures like I cannot see <laughs> the mistake <laughs> maybe my brain has like a filter which is like there is no mistake <laughs> but um yeah mistake there's this cliche thing to say that it makes the charm of the project and yeah I kind of kind of agree and it's also like I don't care <laughs> um for example two things happened with this sweater as I was finishing it because I was over it you know um when I blocked it I noticed there was a dropped stitch here um and that's quite weird I think I missed it when I did the three needle bind off that's funny because I, I like I knitted the whole sleeves and the neckline and I didn't notice it but when I was blocking the sweater, a stitch started to unravel here. And I was like, oh God. So yeah, I just picked it up and I make, made a knot on the inside. And can you see? No, you cannot. <laughs> Do I care? No. <laughs> and another mistake is here. I missed an eyelet. It's here. Here, you can see. There should be an eyelet right there. But um, I missed it because I dropped a stitch. I didn't have the right stitch count. I didn't understand why. <laughs> and um, yeah, when I noticed it, I just decided to pick up that stitch and put it back up, even if it meant obstructing the place where an eyelet would have been. And yeah, it's just, you can't even see it. And it's, I don't care. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, people should relax a little bit. It doesn't have to be that perfect. Of course, if you're like a meticulous, rigorous person, that's great. But don't beat yourself and don't think less of yourself as a knitter because there's little mistakes, you know, because knitting doesn't have to be perfect. There are some things in knitting that are irregular. You can see tension issues. You can see short rows. You're missing eyelets, things. It doesn't really matter. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it doesn't make, like you you drop a stitch. I rarely drop stitches. <laughs> I think it really shows how over I was with this project. Um, but dropping one stitch or making one mistake in the motif is just one part of a whole piece, in this case, a sweater. Does this make the sweater less valuable because there's an eyelet missing and a knot there? No, I don't think so. Um, and yeah, 
I am really happy <laughs> with my finished cone mistakes and all. I used as a yarn, I used uh, Le Petite Potion uh, sock yarn. She's a French indie dyer um, in her toasted almond colorway, which is this beautiful rust color, best color ever. And um, yeah, now I'm sort of a conflicted <laughs> because the shape of the sweater is a V, right? It's like it's more narrow on the hips and it increases on the bust, which is the exact opposite of my person. <laughs> so I'm not sure it's the shape that most suits me. The thing is, I don't quite know how to wear it because um, I, I wanted to wear it over jeans and I'll like, I tried to buy new jeans and it, it, I'm struggling because I don't know what happened. I think there's like a, a time and space fracture. Um, there's a fracture in time uh, because something happened because I have... Um, I haven't bought a jean, a pair of jeans in forever. And the old pairs that I have I still fit me very well. Uh, they're a size, like, um, it's European size, but, like, it's a, it's a size medium. Um, and they're supposed to be, like, slim fit, you know, or skinny fit. And they fit me still very well. They're even a bit loose. Uh, and so I tried to buy new jeans, and I went for the same brand, but I want I wanted, like, really loose properly loose jeans like you know really those mom fit slouchy thing that are really loose fitting on the legs that's the style that i like and so same brand slouchy loose fit i even took a size up so a size large because i really wanted it to be large <laughs> and i don't fit in it <laughs> like what happened <laughs> because i fit in a medium slim fit and I don't fit in a large loose fit what's happening there <laughs> um so yeah I'm basically fighting with fashion brands at the moment <laughs> and desperately trying to find uh the jeans that I actually want uh, and I think they would look good with this sweater but yeah that's the thing I'm very pear-shaped and so yeah I'm not sure how I can wear a V-shaped sweater. Like over a dress, maybe if it's like a flowy. Or on the contrary, if it's like a more fitted crayon type of skirt. But I don't like those. I don't like to be tight and stuff. So yeah, I'm not quite sure how to wear it. However, I find it very practical. Because you have all the, this ease here. Like it's really comfortable. You can move around. I can do like gym stuff. <laughs> aerobics sections and everything but you don't have extra fabric on the hips when you're sitting down and you know when you have like boxy super loose sweater and you have like all those this fabric at the bottom and um, it can be quite nasty and I know this is a problem for persons who are in wheel wheelchairs for example like all the boxy very loose sweaters and there's just too much fabric um, and so this shape is really practical for this because I'm sitting down and there's like no, it's just space put on the top of my hips and it's like no extra fabric, no nothing. And so it's a really practical shape. I just need to maybe find a way to wear it that doesn't make me look like I'm two different sets of a Playmobil character, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, I, I find it extremely comfortable. The yarn really... Um, like it didn't stretch overly which i really appreciate it's a super wash merino nylon blend and i tend to be a bit wary of those but this one is quite tightly twisted and it's like it just stretches so it got a bit of drape but it didn't um it didn't go out of shape too much and it just feels really nice and yeah i think i'm gonna get a lot of wear out of it because it looks cool and um I think I've said everything about this lovely sweater. Um, and yeah, I can move on to my work in progress, which is my Tarayuela cardigan. Um, now that I finished this, um, this is my main personal project. 
and I'm in the middle of the role because I'm a professional um, podcaster, right? And uh, but it actually means that I can sort of show you the cardigan, how it's gonna look once it's like done and closed. So this is the Tarayuela cardigan, which is a design that I created in collaboration with Anna from from Lana et Tricot, uh, which is a yarn shop in Grenoble. And Anna had the idea for the design and she wanted this um, raglan cardigan with a teddy shape featuring this cable on each side of the pattern band. And she asked me to design the pattern for her. So the pattern is up for sale on Anna's Ravelry, Ravelry shop. She, like, uh, some, I got a few questions. It's okay, you don't need to um you don't need to buy it from me um the pattern will only be sold on anna's ravelry shop it's also available on my per hip pay hip store but as far as ravelry goes um it's on anna's shop and it's like we're sharing uh the profits so there's no um it's not a case of if you want to support me uh, you should only buy it from me. No, you just support Anna. She's great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are sharing the sales of, of that. So this is where you can get the pattern. Um, and I will link it in the description, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, I started knitting my version at Lana Etrico in her yarn shop for her little birthday event that happened at the beginning of September. And so, um, yeah, I'm knitting size three, I think, because I want a looser fit um, than what the design was intentionally for, because I, I tailored it to Anna's taste. Um, and so I'm just sizing up because I like a more loose fitting cardigan. And yeah, I basically passed the raglan quite fast uh, and I picked it back up a few days ago and now I'm on the body. And... Um, it's a cropped uh, cardigan, but I think I'm gonna make it a little bit longer. I don't know how long. Basically, I'm knitting the button bands at the same time, right? And making the button holes. So every time I make a button hole, I look at the length and I see, is it good? Is it not yet there? And so yeah, I just add five centimeter per five centimeter until I get to the right length. The cardigan ends with a pretty, large ribbed band at the bottom. Um, and um, yeah, I'm knitting mine with the same yarn that the design was made in. And it is um, Ma Petite Laine, which, is, uh, which was previously called Mon Sheep Shop, which is the French indie dyer, Cindy. Um, but she renamed her brand to Ma Petite Laine, which means my small yarn. And that is how you say Laine. <laughs> Um, the magazine is Leine. It's intended to be the Finnish word for wave, if I remember right. Right? I know a lot of people try to say it like it's a French word. Uh, so it's Len. It's not Lena, Lena. It's just Len, like um, the second part of Helen. Not the name. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, but the magazine is Leine, uh, if I remember correctly. Anyway, Ma Petite Len, <laughs> which is a pure woolly French uh, wool uh, made of sheep from Brittany and it's absolutely gorgeous yarn I really really love it it's like it's a two-ply woolen spin it's so bloomy it's so it gets so plump and everything so this has 400 meters per 100 gram which is like fingering weight right but the cardigan is knitted at a 22 stitch per 10 centimeter gauge which is more of a sport decay weight gauge and this is just the magic of wool and span yarn. Um, and it's a, a little advice that if you want to, if you're on a budget and you want to make a, a garment that is in decay weight, it's quite expensive to buy a sweater quantity of decay weight, especially if you're making a larger size. Um, so if you like wool and span yarns, you can get a heavy fingering or a sport weight yarn, wool and span, and you will need less balls or less skeins because you will have more meterage per ball. 
but you will be able to obtain the same gauge because these yarns they bloom and you just they're very forgiving and they just occupy a bit more space as you can see here this is unblocked this has been folded and twisted in the bottom of my project bag uh, for months and it still looks good um yeah this is what i mean when i say woolen spun are so forgiving it's they're blurred anyway so if there's a looser stitch a tighter stitch within reason of course you wouldn't see it it's really really pleasant to knit with woolen spun yarns and this one is particular is really nice and crunchy it has a dry feel it's not prickly at all um and it's really really nice and it smells sounds very sheepy <laughs> and um yeah i chose the colorway maro which is like a icy brown thing with a bit of mauve tint and yeah i have three skeins but i'm really not using a lot like i used one one skein and i still have two little balls here because i'm going to alternate for the the sleeves because they don't look so different in the cake but uh, in this shade in particular it's quite nuanced, so I didn't want to risk having a, a line when I change skeins. So I do alternate them for a few centimeters when I change color um, here. And um, yes, I'm going to do it again with the sleeve. So I barely started my second skein. And um, yeah, <laughs> I'm really going to have uh, quite some yarn left over. So this cardigan is really... Um, not very um glutton how how do you say it in english <laughs> yeah it, it does not eat a lot of yarn um and uh yeah that is how it's looking now i have buttons for it and i have two options i wanted i want buttons like toggle buttons the ones that uh, don't have all holes but attach on the button and i have two options and my first choice is this one, which is like a silver thing with an ornamental, but placing it on the cardigan, I don't know. I think it's a bit too different. I don't know if that looks good. My, uh, It's a bit too shiny, perhaps. So I don't know. My other option are those, but I don't have enough. And I don't know if I can buy some more. These as well have some ornaments on them, but they're a bit more muted in color. And um, I'm yeah, trying, to, trying to hold them. I don't know. Which one do you prefer? <laughs> Help me. The thing is, I'm afraid, because this is like a, a much wider drawing, I think it looks a bit weird next to that big cable. And I kind of figured these buttons would look better on a, on a lighter type of lighter yarn, like a cream yarn or something that's a bit more subtle. Um, but these are maybe a bit too shiny. I don't know. I think I'll get a better idea when the cardigan... Mm -hmm. I think I'll see better when the cardigan will be finished and I'll just lay it flat with the buttons. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's going really fast. This is not a complicated design by any means. Um, at the beginning, you do have to pay a bit of attention until you get the rhythm. Basically, you're doing the raglan, the cable, and the button band at the same time. But each of those things is such a basic stuff. Like, the cable is really, really simple. Uh, it's just the arrowhead typical cable, so you don't even have to look at the chart. <laughs> you can memorize it by heart. The raglan is really easy to follow as well. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a complicated uh, design, but it looks quite... Um, sophisticated in the way it's finished. So I'm really eager to have mine done and to take pictures of it to show you. So yeah, 
this is Tara Yuvilla. And uh, that is it as far as knitting project goes. I wanted to show you some pretty yarn that I bought recently. I bought some West Wool, which I have been eyeing for a while. Um, if you don't know, West Wool is the yarn made by uh, Steven and Penelope, uh, the yarn shop in Amsterdam. And um, my dog just made a really weird noise. <laughs> I um, was considering <laughs> getting that yarn. Um, but I kind of wanted to uh, feel it a little bit before, see if it was something specific. And then I saw, um, I met with Marie Amélie, which is a French designer, um, earlier in January, and she was knitting on a gorgeous uh, sweater. Um, her designs of her, which is going to be full brioche. It's a sweater with like big um, leaf motif in brioche. It's black and grey. And it's, she hasn't released it yet. <laughs> I don't know what, when she will. Um, it's a really gorgeous sweater. And um, she was knitting it with West Wool. And so I saw her when she was knitting on it. And so I just went to pet the yarn. This was before <laughs> the pandemic. So when we could pet things like this. So, and yeah, I found that the yarn was um, had a really cool, soft, interesting texture. And indeed, it's 90% Falkland Merino, so, you know. <laughs> Falkland Merino, I find, is just as soft as any uh, classic white superwash Merino, like the ones that are made from Australia, like the Saxon Merino and everything. But um, the Falkland one, I find it's often less treated um, and it's it always has a little bit more of a bouncy, fluffy feel in the way it's processed. And here it's blended with 10% textile. And it's just, the yarn has a nice discreet shine to it, which you can't really see because I have the artificial light going on, but it's a really nice yarn. It's a three ply and it's uh, quite, it's very round, but it's not too tightly twisted. So it's like a nice balance of things. There's a fingering weight and I got the DK weight, which is Tandem. And basically, I bought this to make a sweater. Whenever I buy yarn, I always have an idea of what I can do with it. Maybe I'm going to change my mind, either because um, I'm going to change my mind about a, a design idea or, or a project, or I'm going to have another idea and, or a pattern is going to come out and it's going to be the perfect fit. But I try never to buy yarn without having at least one possibility of what this yarn could become. So this is intended to be a sweater and I sort of, I'm feeling a lot of like big chunky color blocky stripe thing at the moment. And what I really like to do is having a bunch of colors that sort of go together. As you can see, these are like sort of soft colors. You have the gray, you have the really pale pink and you have this old dusty pink here and then having a flash of a complete different color with that blue. So the idea is to make a sweater, like a striped sweater, like this. And I kind of want to have some texture thingy, maybe some caloric bands happening in between the stripes, but I'm, I don't know exactly yet, but I sort of have an idea and that's enough to get the yarn. And uh, yeah, it's really nice and plump and uh, I just wanted to show it to you because those are happy colors. <laughs> and yeah, I really like how they all look together. And yeah, that's it for the neaty yarny stuff. Now I do want to show you my Bargello stitching. So I've been doing this uh, embroidery method, which is called Bargello. It's a vertical stitching basically and I've been making the Christmas ornaments from Hello Bargello which is uh, an American crafter who makes patterns and kits for Bargello and last time I already showed you a set and this is the other set of Christmas ornaments that I'm making um, and as you can see it's just you just make these vertical strands but the magic of Bargello is really in 
arranging the colors. And this is where the genius of the people who make the patterns are for me, because I could never think of that. Um, so these are all the same, exact same pattern. It's, it's the same arrangement of stitches. But here you have one where the colors go from dark to light, then light. They're gonna hang like this as diamonds, basically. You're gonna have a little hangy thing here, some brass ornaments there. I will show you when I finish them, obviously. And basically you have the reverse colors here. So they're gonna be double-sided. I'm gonna sew two sides together later. Uh, it's made on plastic canvas. And so you're gonna have one face dark, one face light. You have the red version. And then you have this, which is exactly the same arrangement of stitches, but just the colors are placed differently. And you have the two sets of colors with stop sort of halfway there and it creates this star motif, which I found really pretty. And you see, if you look at it from afar, it sort of has an optical illusion effect, which I find very cool. And yeah, um, basically I need to do this with the opposite color, with the red and the blue outside. And then I need to make all of this again for me because I'm making a set for my boyfriend and his family and then I'm making a set for me and my family. Yeah, so I have more time to finish them. But still, I wouldn't want to ship a package too late. My makeup is going everywhere except where it's supposed to be. <laughs> um, I wouldn't want to ship a package um, too late in the year because um, it's a mess <laughs> during the holiday season, of course. Um, but yeah, um, that's what I've been making. And I really want to finish them because I really want to cross stitch at the moment. But uh, yeah, I want to focus on this type of embroidery and finish it first. And that's it for all the crafty things. Um, now I want to do a little talk about Patreon because this is a new month and if you don't know I have a Patreon page where you can support me and my little business. Basically it's another way for you to buy my designs. So you can, you have three levels on Patreon and all the details and more are in the Patreon page and I put the link in the description below if you want to check it out. But basically you have three levels which are 2 euros, 5 euros and 10 euros. And for 5 and 10 euros you get one or two patterns every month of your choice and you also um, get a specific video that I do exclusively for Patreon every month. Um, so they're not podcasts, they're not the same type of video. They're either tutorials on certain techniques, they're behind the scenes vlogs, or they're um, technical chats about certain uh, techniques or uh, themes that you ask me. It's like, it's quite varied. Um, we're talking about yarns, we're talking like woolen spun, worsted spun, as I was talking before. Uh, there's some color work, technical discussion, some gauge, a topic, some tutorials on uh, various finishing techniques and things. So yeah, there's quite a lot <laughs> already. And this month's technical discussion is all about uh, winter knits and warm yarns and fabric. So I did a video where I basically talk about what makes a yarn warm uh, in terms of its composition, in terms of its structure. And then I also um, talk about what can you do when you're knitting to ensure that your project is going to be as warm as possible. Um, so that's the video. And then I also uploaded an article uh, along to go with it, basically, which uh, I made a selection of patterns on Ravelry, which are sort of like winter jackets, you know, patterns that of cardigans that can be used as outdoors garments. And in the article, I also talk about what construction of design you should be looking for if you want to make a warm, big jacket. Um, and I also uh, talk about uh, some yarn favorites that I 
either discovered recently or that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, some yarns that are uh, especially great for warmer knits to make in the cool weather. And um, yeah, in, uh, I give some tips as well <laughs> about um, how to use certain yarns and etc. And uh, yeah, this is the theme for this month. Now, when you join Patreon, you actually have access to all the previous content. So you can see all the videos since we're, we've been on Patreon for uh, over a year now. So since October 2019. So that's quite a lot of content. So yeah, if you're, um, I don't know, if you're stuck at home for some reason and <laughs> you are looking for some knitting videos to see, um, maybe that can be of interest to you. And as usual, I really want to put emphasis on the fact that you do not have to stay on Patreon um, at all. <laughs> you can try it if you're interested or like I said, it's a way to buy a pattern. So if you want a pattern on a certain month, you can join Patreon, you can get the pattern and then you can leave. And you don't have to stay, you don't have to apologize when you're leaving. Um, there are so many amazing creators on Patreon, so please um, uh, do have a look at the creators that you would like to support. There's a lot of them and never feel bad that you're uh, changing subscriptions or uh, just changing the levels as well. Um, it's um, it's a really great content platform. So um, don't be put off by the fact that the French is third on Patreon. It's just that I have more French patrons, but I write everything in English as well. And the videos, I subtitle them myself in English. So um, everything is available in English as well. You can also pay in pounds and US dollars on Patreon also, which avoids uh, conversion fees. For you <laughs> not for me <laughs> um but yeah patreon is really useful for me as um as a creator it really is a great support um and it allowed me to invest into a big project my patreon will hear about quite soon this is also a thing on patreon it's a good thing to um ask you about your opinions and stuff and to also reveal you um the upcoming projects that i'm working on so yeah, um, that is for what I'm doing on Patreon. But like I said, feel free to um, just check which creators are on Patreon because there's quite a few knitting related ones. Uh, there's also activists, illustrators, um, musicians on, are on Patreon and that's lovely. Um, so yeah, uh, feel free to, um, if you have never heard of the platform, feel free to have a look and see if that's something that can interest you. Um, for my little promotion segment again. <laughs> um, I want to end this episode with a YouTube channel recommendation because, um, yeah, if you've been needing some relaxing <laughs> video footage, I've been watching this channel for a while now and I really like it. It's Lizichi's channel. I'm, I'm butchering that, I'm sorry. Um, probably a lot of you already know about her. Um, her channel is quite big. Um, but yeah, I um, I really like her. Basically, she is uh, making videos where she, she shows a uh, process. Um, uh, usually it's food, a lot of food, where you can see her uh, gathering the crops uh, and then cooking everything and making some really traditional, elaborate um, cooking things. And Sometimes once she hung khakis as garlands, and then she, um, she like she um, made them into a sort of chutney and sugar. I don't have the English terms for food. Um, and then uh, sometimes she makes. Um, there's actually also some sort of fiber crafts. Like there's building crafts as well. But uh, in one video, she makes some sort of silk. Um, qu quilting thing and she starts with the silk um, cocoon like the from the from the warm so she really goes from start to finish all in the traditional handcrafting method and everything and so she's um she's Chinese and uh, yeah the videos are stunning uh, gorgeous landscapes 
really nice uh, video quality film. It's just so pretty and relaxing and it has a little music, uh, like the sort of chill music, you know, like Ghibli um, cover piano thing, <laughs> this sort of mood. And it's a really nice YouTube channel and I really like it. And I think at the moment, maybe um, I thought some of you might be interested in, interested into watching some uh, relaxing videos. So this is why I thought I would talk about this because I've been talking about it on with other people on Instagram and they um, and they liked it too. So I thought I would, um, just in case you don't know about this channel, uh, let you know. And I think that's it for this episode. I talked way more than I thought <laughs> I would. And uh, yeah, I hope you are well. Uh, I wish you a really good end of November. Uh, I hope you are healthy and safe. And um, for um, a new podcast, I also have some content planned for December, but I will uh, let you know about this once it's a little bit clearer in my head. But um, yeah, have a nice time.